<clears throat> All right, yeah. So uh, after some, after staying underwater for maybe about two more hours and heading away from the previous convoy, there's still in the general area. I can still, you know, kind of see them off in the distance. Um, at least the wreckage is a Corvette. Yeah, roughly. Uh, almost 5k out. Yeah, so uh, he's since it's pretty choppy waves. Uh, well, not super choppy, but just enough to where our silhouette in the water is extremely low. Uh, from that distance, they're lucky if they see the top of the conning tower. So, anyways, um, we're breaking contact, radioed in uh, to HQ that we met our objective and sank a bunch of. Uh, <clears throat> tonnage or whatever we expended uh, all our torpedoes in the process I think we sank a total of five or six ships I can't remember off the top of my head um, so now after um, notifying to headquarters that we did indeed uh, make contact and uh, neutralize our target um, now they, they, they now gave us a, um, a mission to seek out a uh, U-boat in distress. Uh, we're and we're heading in that direction. <laughs> uh, it's a nice, beautiful day. Uh, you know, so now we're surfaced and away from breaking contact. Uh, we're still at alarm minus one, and fatigue minus three. Uh, but we're positive. We're gaining. Uh, I think we're gaining, but we're not. Yeah, we are. So the uh, the positive is more than the negative. So yeah, we should uh, be gaining discipline, but it doesn't really look like it for some reason. So, uh, to combat that, I guess maybe we'll let them uh, play cards or something, which is weird. So, just uh, just as we fixed the conning tower lighting, um, yeah, now these lights are bugged, so I'm sure it's not until and the patrol that that'll be functioning again. <sighs> Otherwise, uh, yeah, there you go. Currently, stations unused. So, uh, but uh, because obviously, you know, or now we're in alarm state. Excuse me. Yeah, you can't play cards or anything like that in alarm state. Um, but we can. Got me too. Play music. Oh yeah, we're in alarm state. What am I doing? So you can't play. Obviously, you cannot. So it'll click. It'll say alert state. Uh, and that's because we're still in contact with uh, said convoy. And obviously, there's still a hostile threat. Uh, at 5k, is the Corvette here about 5 to 6k away. And then we, we still have you know life rafts and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, we should be in the clear. I'm not too worried about. Any hostels and such. Uh, the only thing I'm kind of concerned about, but not super concerned about, is because the conditions, the wave conditions, it, you know, it is really easy to see this huge wake that the submarine is producing from the, you know, from the air. But we're out in the middle of the ocean. I don't remember the range of the reconnaissance aircraft from, say, uh, this uh, Saint or Saint Evil. Avail, uh, RAF, flight, uh, airfield. Oh yeah, look at that. So, um, looks like the officer that we, um, more or less tasked out to recon, use aerial recon on this port, um, you know, spotted nets and a couple of mines. And uh, that doesn't mean that's their exact location. That just means, you know, they're in this general area. And, uh, I've actually, I didn't, Start recording. I didn't record it, but um, to get over the net, I uh, these nets as I was fleeing Scapa Flow, I I timed it so uh, you know going as fast as I could put the submarine, and I had the submarine at an angle, uh, you know, so the bow was. Maybe like a 45 degree angle surface in to go to periscope or surface, and it was just enough to get the bow over the net, and then uh, 
you know, and then through the rest of the weight, uh, the submarine came down on the net, and it kind of got stuck for a second, but then it kept going because the propellers would hit the water, and I slumbered over the, <laughs> slumbered over top of the net, and uh, yeah. So there's that. Uh, yep. So there's that situation. It's actually kind of funny. So we're going to go ahead, uh, quick time this event, or quick time it here, because, you know, they're staying away, we'll break contact, Corvettes patrolling, and they'll eventually break off to catch up with the rest of the convoy. So now we're on travel mode, because we broke contact, or visual contact with the convoy, and now we're going to be en route to check on the status of said U-boat. And before I do that, make sure we have two... Additional sailors for watch. Our navigation correctness is at 96%. Sleeping. Capitaine. Engine guy. Yep. Radio. Okay, we're good. And, uh, let's check. One more thing before we. Last time, I'm not really too concerned about the chow piece. Because we are. Pretty good on gel. Yep, salad. Yeah, so they're just now finishing up the uh, what are the sausages? Yeah. And here away we go. Away we go. Because <coughs> uh, of the time compression, I call it Star Trek patrolling. You know? Oh shit, that's not good. See, uh, the game doesn't stop automatically, it just slows down for a second. I will, will report that we see the chim uh, chimney smoke. That's not good. What is it, one ship? That's moving pretty fast for... I don't know about that being chimney smoke. <laughs> uh, so we're in travel mode, so it's... Uh, please don't be a, well, I mean, yeah, I think it meant contrail, maybe, because that's moving at the speed of an aircraft. But it's not bombing us, so I'm not going to complain. You can go to sleep. Alright, so, uh, I mean, this is a pretty cool thing that's about to take place. Uh, I've done it before. Um, generally speaking, it's been the same situation uh, three times, but I'm not going to talk about it in case you haven't done it yourself. I'm going to, I guess, show you. And, you know, the U-boat loading. So we're in the general area. Um, psh, psh, psh. Go ahead, fast travel to the said location. So remember, it's in this general area. That the, that's not the exact location of this said U-boat. That's in distress. But anyways, it's pretty neat uh, what's about to happen when we uh, find said stranded submarine. That is it within said uh, circle here. It's a probability. It's uh, changed. You know, this is a type 7C U-boat. We now spotted the U-boat. It says you spotted the U-boat. Missing radio operator. And that means all we need to do is put, see that guy sleeping, put him right here. Man's radio station. 150 points, send a message out. His comm sees. I think it was about maybe four patrols ago. It was constant fog and raining and choppy waters. Terrible. Total waste of munitions and fuel. Alright, so they detected the said submarine. And what we'll do, looks like it's already dead in the water. Here's a pull up right next to it. Rotate these guys out. Yeah, get this in here. Oh, 
how cat can rack out too. Jeez. So I got two leaders that are practically almost ready to pass out. And then one of them's gonna have to go possibly on board said submarine, you know? So one of them's gonna be pissed. Wake up here in a couple next couple next couple of minutes. Ah well. Yep, so fast time, fast travel there. And obviously, you know, we redetected re said submarine because, you know, I took down the watch, added the two additional sailors, thus shrinking the sight circle. Evening colors. Alright, yeah, so it looks like... So once you get within, you know, 500 meters or so, it prompts you to, uh, we can send our men on the mission nearby. So generally, uh, he is carrying small arms, may be useful for officers going on dangerous missions outside the submarine. Uh, you know, which is, I guess, what I would like for it to increase the probability of, uh, you know, him running into something terrible that he would less he'd be less likely to die, maybe get wounded, and be able to save him. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead full stop. And there's the, uh, you know, submarine. We're moving too fast, so we can't launch uh, from here. But it's pretty neat. So you'll literally watch him. It will oh, first pop uh, into, um, you know, investigate. It says U 1308 is floating on the water surface without any living soul on deck. Inspection from our boat makes it clear that the boat sustained major damage. Remains a mystery through what happened to the crew and why the enemy left it in such a state of <clears throat> on the water. So he goes on board, gets his little thingy. You don't have to, you have to watch the captain, you can still maintain stuff. He's, you know, boarding the submarine himself. It was up to me. I'll take a little bit, I'll take more than one guy. But, uh, you know, it's early access, whatever. Um. <clears throat> So then, uh, once he makes it to said submarine, you know, you, you see the little icon down here with the helmet. That means he's on board. And the progression bar is slowly filling, not the gray ugly one that's filling, but this green uh, lower one in the bottom right corner there. And then uh, it, will, it will let us know what the situation is once it fills up. Copy, T. Probably have... Uh, this guy stand with extra watches just to extend this sight circle since we're pretty vulnerable. All right, so then you got the exclamation point here. Click on it. it says uh, Von Graf uh, continuously, cautiously boarded the U thirteen zero eight, pointing that he could not hear any sounds from inside the ship. It's like submarine. He went on. <coughs> he went to the conning tower and carefully opened the closed hatch. and quickly ran to the barriers of the conning tower, clearly choking. He reported inside. Our uh, corpses of sailors dry blood flowing out of their eyes and lips. Owls. <laughs> uh, Von Graf had no doubt the ship was damaged by a mine, which led to flooding or batteries of, of the boat, which turned uh, the released chlorine gas, resulted in the death of the entire crew. So then, uh, if I picked one of my engineers over there, it could, uh, you know, I have the possibility of uh, Von Graf mines the ship, explosives charges will explode after a few minutes, sinking the vessel. The boat must be sunk; it cannot fall into. The hands of the enemy require an engineer, but since he's not an engineer, we're we'll just gonna sink it from here with a deck gun. So then, uh, you know, without me touching the camera or whatever, this is the ship or U-1308 that, you know, evidently the crew died because of, you know, hitting a mine underwater. Um, I have not seen mines yet, uh, luckily, <laughs> but uh, you, know, you got the Preparing to return. Oh, great smoke, chim chimney smoke. That's not good. And then it's at 8%. Once it's at 100%, you'll see him crossing back to our boat. Poor dead. So now there's chimney smoke off the horizon. So, I mean, that's just an estimation of theirs. It might have been the destroyer really jacked them up and they, you know, surfaced. It's just speculation that. They hit a mine, so you never know. All right, so now he's back on board. 
Uh, where is this smoke at exactly? It's way out there. Yeah, it's approaching. Yep, it's closing. Interesting. So we'll have to get this lickety split done in a hurry. Uh, so typically, um, <clears throat> so let's see, because he's, still record please, uh, so he, you know, because he's, um, you know, rank three, I believe, I can have four, or one, two, three, sailors so instead of just two, so, uh, you know, I have four on the gun, and what that does is it hastens the reloading process, and, uh, I'm not going to test his gunnery because it's a severe waste of ammunition even though we have a lot you know I still like to uh, be quite conservative in case I get higher headquarters like I'll stay out there and sink what you can so we're gonna switch to AP is armor piercing we're gonna try to aim at the water line here uh, I'm, I don't think once the round impacts the water surface it doesn't yeah you know, it doesn't travel through the water and hit anything so I think yeah I get so I don't think that did anything so obviously there's an entire crew here. If there's like one or two guys, the reloading takes takes quite a minute. So it's really All right, so it looks like that was a hit. So what I try to do is I'll try to get aft, and then one in the <coughs> towards the bow. Yeah. One further up. This is actually pretty easy, but you know that's why I'm so I'm, I got really close to this thing. One, so the the trip for the reconnaissance uh, done by the captain is shorter. That and uh, you know potentially having to sink it. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Still not do anything. Um, yeah, the, you know right now it's pretty calm seas, but. When the ocean's not as calm per se, it's you know the sights are bouncing all over the place. All right, so let me put one more. And then uh, once we're done with this, we'll go and investigate the. Uh, there she goes. God rest her. God bless her crew. So I put the gun back at. Uh, Center here, and then simply you know leave and dismiss the crew. Oh man, give him some, some Z's. We'll go ahead, head standard. Here we go. Intercept June course, chimney smoke. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll just course of these coordinates. Head in that general direction. Or actually, yoink. So what is it? It's pretty deep, 4,000 meters under the keel, so I'm not too worried. And we're cruising. Are we out of alarm state? Yeah, we are. So let's see here. We'll have them play cards to improve morale. I'll check that out. Both officers are working. Huh. Of course, we don't want that. So we did. Get rack out. Air Caloy. The Deans, the Nemarine. Uh, loading the North East Atlantic area. Yeah, so since they uh, implemented that, I'll go ahead and save because everything's going pretty good. Since they implemented that, uh, you know, the transition maps, as I like to call it. How the game runs a lot smoother. Oh, oh shit, that's a... Oh man, yeah, so that that's a hunter-killer group. What is that? Those those are baddies. Alright, that's two destroyers. Three destroyers. Well, shit. Alright, well. And they're coming right for us. Uh, that was probably a trap. Well, not coming. Well, I mean, we're in the way. We're not detected. So I'm gonna try to bur turn and burn here <laughs> and get out of their way because they will detect us if we're, uh, you know, in their, their, you know. So I'm, I'm trying. What I'm trying to say is, you know, decrease the probability of getting in their way. 
27 knots. Three destroyers, no torpedoes. Bad juju. Maybe they're responding to the deck gun noise. Who knows? But yeah, those guys, they're totally, uh, they're totally searching. <laughs> Not going very fast. So I'd like to thank that red circle. I'm not sure. It's 1941. I don't think they have radar yet. Oops. But uh, that's their potential detection circle, maybe. I'm not sure. Oh, man. But yeah, so it looks like they're their point of travel for all three of them is that way. <laughs> Oops. Oh, that's good. Let's see. And then, <clears throat> worst case scenario, <laughs> just be it just over a click away as they come in this direction, which is quite terrible. Course auf diese Koordinaten setzen. Ibly. Well, we haven't been spotted by them. That's that's good. I guess we should have an ID said ship. Oh crap! It says the, ra the radar. Uh, the vessel uses radar. That's not good. So maybe we are detected. This is insane. It says uh, radar. Rare whose wavelength is longer than this value wouldn't be able to detect you all oh, thousand. Visibility ninety seven. Uh how far are these dudes? Roughly six K. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to create as much distance as possible on the surface. And then eventually dive. I'm not gonna mess around with periscope depth. Probably hang out at, uh, I guess start out at 50 meters. Um, yes, it's a hunter killer group with three destroyers, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, I think I, I read, it's like a U-boat captain's book is like memoirs from a bunch of, uh, U-boat captains, I guess, or at least guys that earned Knight's Crosses that survived till the end of the war or duration of the war um, and they mentioned that you know when they crash dive depending on the circumstances they need to go straight to you know the SOP standard operation procedure with this thing is 150 150 meters and I'll crash dive to get the thing underwater and I'll tell them to go to like 50, 50 meters per se to uh, you know throw them off potentially what are these little dots It's just bugs. So, uh, you know, because they'll detect you at 50 meters, and then you change depth and course and all that stuff. It keeps them, uh, you know, guessing. It's not as easy for them to you know, hit you with that charge. Yeah, it looks like these dudes are tracking me. They're they're rotating. They're turning towards me. Yeah, they're tracking me. So we're gonna go ahead and dive. Oh, excuse me. So they got radar. That's very, very bad. Let's see, I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah. Nope. Anyways, there's a uh, one, two, three. Smoke. Oh, smoke. Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Let's get. Oh, we did. Let's do the diving planes. And your phones. Yeah, I don't have them hide the periscope. I don't care about that. Wechseln auf E-Motor! 
go ahead and turn that off, get the conning tower secured. We'll go ahead, 60 meters. We'll uh, keep our head full, the turn and burn the best we can in the water. Go ahead, the silent running. Okay, dude. Move with it. And have him turn off the gyro. Turn off the galley. Turn off the engine room lighting. I'll probably go ahead and turn off the bow compartment as well. I mean, I'm not sure how well you guys can see it, but you know, you still see them. They're just chilling in the dark. I can't turn off, um, you know, the electricity to, the, you know, the officer quarters because it's, you know, it's powering like, the listening room slash radio room. So, um, because we dove and they're outside our hydrophone uh, circle, and we're going 13 knots, which is pretty, pretty loud right now, but I like to think I'm outside their, you know, sonar detection radius. But basically, I'm pretty confident that they might have spotted me and I just didn't catch it, or they are tracking us by radar. And, um, because <clears throat> I saw them change course, it seemed like they deviated, like, you know, more south. So instead of gambling and then closing the distance and tracking me via radar, I was going to go ahead and dive and try to get away from that last uh, known contact position <coughs> the best I can. Uh, and, I mean, you got 14 hours of battery life. We're already set up to preserve. Um, I'm just worried about the discipline. Current depth, fatigue, alarm. 56% already. So we may or may not see somebody panic in the next 30 minutes. At this stage, uh, I generally don't uh, use time compression. Because, um, you know, in my humble opinion, when you're trying to get away from destroyers um, without losing all the work you did, um, especially in real life, because you know time's precious. Uh, I do enjoy playing games, but I don't. I do not like, you know, having to repeat or load a said game because then it kind of breaks the immersion. If you if you catch what I'm saying. Pretty dark because we're already 15 meters below the surface. And it's about 17:30. So um, let's see here. What was I gonna do? Think, 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 think. Oh yeah. So I guess uh, I'll actually show you guys. Copy T. So you can, you know, actually get behind the uh, hydrophones and listen. Uh, so they're off to our. I think they're off to our port, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's them there, obviously. Yeah, so to me that sounds like they're still searching. So I'm not I'm not exactly sure what these modes are. You can just barely hear that. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. Just barely make it out. So I guess it tunes it out to where I can narrow it down to where their actual bearing is.
my sister's calling me. Maybe low, medium, high uh, density through the head for headphones. So you can narrow it down better. Yeah, so the, it sounds like all three of them, they're still, uh, still searching. They're not, I mean, what I mean by that is, it sounds like they're still going, you know, maybe like five to eight knots searching underwater, listening. I don't hear you pinging yet, so I wish I would have marked this last known position. So it, I'm not sure. I'm gonna keep that course. I'm gonna go ahead and slow down. Oh man. Maintain 60 meters. And you now mouse is a waiting game. The whole count mouse of this this part. I guess because you guys are watching, I can fast forward uh, or time compress. That's so. I'll, I guess I'll do that. Heck. All right. So obviously the en the engine room. You can see a little fish down here. That's pretty cool. It'd be nice. That'd be so cool. Every once in a while, you see like a big effing uh, white shark or whale in the background. That'd be cool. Um. Anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Obviously, we have to keep the stern torpedo room uh, with electricity because it's obviously running electric engines. Propul you know, driving the propulsion. Propellers, diesel room don't need, galley don't need, uh, crew quarters you don't need, uh, doesn't need power. So what I do sometimes is if I'm going to maintain this depth and uh, in this course, I'll go ahead and oops, not that button. I'll go ahead and shut off the control room, and that will cause them to, you know, go do something else more or less. Uh, obviously, you can't maneuver the submarine uh, at that state. So if I click on the map, try to change the course, it's not going to happen. Because there's no electricity to dive planes in a rudder. Um, so it, 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 it stays relatively at 60 meters. Yeah, you know, with the rudders and the dive planes locked in the position um, that they're in. Uh, so now... The only um, compartment that's utilizing electricity is, you know, the engines and, uh, you know, the officers' cores because they're, you know, running the hydrophones. And even sometimes, you know, completely dark out of the submarine, for instance. And then uh, tell those guys, uh, you know, relax or go to sleep if possible. Copy to it. You know, so completely blacked out. The only um, thing that's on right now, obviously, is the, uh, the engine room. And then uh, we stay at this depth, uh, you know, till they ping us, you know, more or less. Uh, so that is what I do, you know, to prepare for extended silent running. For a long or long duration of silent running, and uh, I'm kind of worried about the discipline. Next 27 minutes. I'm not exactly sure how that roll. So we'll go ahead and compress it. Five. And that's just an estimation. That doesn't mean they're there. They could be like over here somewhere. Because keep in mind, uh, since I turned off the officer uh, room, the hydrophones are not being operated. You know, the device is currently disabled. Uh, to try to, you know, show you yeah, know, how, that, uh, yeah, how, how that works. So we'll go ahead and turn the lights back on. Yeah, what? I'll go ahead and man the listening post again. You'll see the hydro circle extend back out. We'll actually add an additional sailor uh, to extend the hydro range even further. And these are all precautions 
that I take to, uh, you know, increase the you know, survival of the boat, because who likes getting suck? Oh, man. So it looks like... Oh, we'll let them try to detect it first before I get on there. You know, like I said, discipline. All right, God bless. 17 minutes till somebody's gonna crack. <laughs> yeah, so after this mission, definitely gotta let them take some kind of leave. 14 days. And if you haven't watched the first video, you know, you're able to send your crews on, you know, little retreats. And then, depending on which one it is, obviously the nicer their treat, the more points, or more uh, income it is, you know, you'll spend. But then there's bonuses, i.e., you know, increasing 25% of the XP or whatever uh, from this patrol. And then, uh, you know, there's bonuses such as, um, you know, they won't get fatigued for 10 days or something like that, or... Or if you have anybody researching like the ammunition factory, uh, I guess level one will be completed sooner or later. It's like a, it says like a, I think it says like 100% acceleration for researching uh, technology. So it looks like um, so it looks like they potentially either lost contact air contact and uh, they're you know sailing off but let me ch I'm gonna try to I mean the experience this guy is a uh, it's level three radio man he's a radio officer so he'll jump on the radio uh, first but he has sensitive hearing uh, it's a skill you can acquire obviously the officer spent at 10 hours of on the hydrophones and learn to better recognize quiet sounds from, from the background. The officer can detect enemy ships 25% of distance. In addition, in manual mood, the sea noise is slightly quieter. So they, there's that. Yeah, hello. I'll go ahead and listen myself. Yeah, so I can still hear him. Just barely. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that or not. I just barely hear him on medium. Yeah, so before they were, uh, you know, relatively about 120 degrees. Now they're almost directly west of me. About 270. So, uh... So, you know, there's nothing, I'm not gonna worry about the discipline too much, but we're gonna maintain this speed and depth. You know, they're going away, or, you know, the sonar, the hydrophones is, um, you know, fading, as they say. So we'll go ahead and up the periscope depth. Increase the speed of smidgen. Yeah, hello. Oh man, we'll go ahead, turn on the power back to control room so we can maneuver. Copy to you. Over this guy over here. Two befit. Where is that? No, it'll just be idle. So because the control room is now powered up, we can maneuver the sub. Now moving the sub back to periscope depth. We'll have Skipper go ahead and look at the attack on periscope. Let's 
sailor at random and he's looking through the observation periscope. I'll go ahead and, and give him permission to go ahead and raise collect information on all contacts. You can hide the periscope so he's not sitting there when they're maybe a click away and you're trying to avoid uh, contact. You can go ahead and uh, I wonder if they have a, a radar detection. I just thought about that. Actually, we'll track the periscopes. Just so they don't pick up the the uh, signatures from the periscopes. So because things are looking good, yeah, the crew is bugging out, or the crew lights are bugging. It's supposed to be on. I already checked the uh, breakers, if you will. There isn't uh, breakers for quarters <clears throat> yeah so somebody's about to pop we got like five minutes so to if you really wanted to save this um, you could surface that might change it but you know I'm not playing with the fact that they might have radar so yeah, we're going to go ahead and let that discipline drop. It's not worth it. So the discipline will drop. And then I'm pretty sure Sailor has a heart attack. No, that's the first. So I think we'll probably have to get a guy with a medic. Yes, yeah, so we've got three minutes. So I think all we need to do is right click to the first fear. aid. And he goes and grabs the first aid. Where he is. And he's administering aid. And then, uh, so you got, I guess, three minutes to stabilize him, potentially. Excuse me. And then, you know, because of that one guy, uh, you know, I guess had a stroke practically or lost discipline or whatever. Call it. Um, you know the discipline rebounds, <clears throat> and then this guy's condition in improves. Um, so yeah, that was a heart attack, which is weird. It's not the first time that's happened. Uh, the first time it's happened to me, um, the guy just had he was just straight up panicking and. Had the cop, the captain's come down. It took a, it took a minute, but uh, it wasn't a big deal. We'll go ahead and turn on the. Pump I, I hear Kaloi. Because there's already, I think it says, well, not too much. 0.6 millimeters of water remain in this compartment. I, I hear Kaloi. Where are you going, man? Captain, bestätigt. Lighting. Bestätigt. Turn on the gyroscope. Herr Kaloi. Have the navigator correct our navigation correct distance at zero percent. <clears throat> yeah, so now that we have normal lighting, it's a plus ten percent. So that would, you know didn't really give us too much time, but Because we're in alert status, can't play the radio, can't play cards, and that jazz. Captain, you're on the rest cycle, dude. Yeah, so he's on the periscope. I, you know, you can still man it, but uh, you just tell him to hide the periscope, and he'll contract there. He'll lower it out of the water. Or into the submarine, so it's not sticking out. Yeah, so we're just outside contact, maybe. Try 
travel boat. So that's good. So that means uh, we're no longer in alarm state or alarm status. It's kind of like battle stations for these guys, more or less. And uh, you know, we can go ahead, re, you know, surface, you know, uh, you know, geez, what am I trying to say? Surface, recharge our oxygen, then discipline, more or less. Gee whiz, we met our, you know, Coordinaten setzen. So we got, uh, I don't know how much, what does that say? Mm. How much patrolling we got left. But, uh, you know, we're gonna we'll patrol and at least, you know, patrol in that area. Because we'll still get tasked out by higher. So we'll go ahead and surface, I suppose. Tanks anblasen! Blowing the ballast tanks. Air color. on the radio. Go ahead, I guess, play a little bit of music. Valkyrie. <laughs> So I always go for the diesel compressor regardless of you know if it's fifty eight percent, you know, I I am infatuated with having a hundred percent at all times. At least when we surface anyways, after blowing the ballasts. This guy's supposed to be in the rest cycle, come on dude. So I have him get off the periscope. Bridge, obviously. So, you know, they know that the patrol is coming to a close. As we expanded our torpedoes, and we, I think, made there sunk six ships potentially. So there's a, a, you know, heading home plus six. Um, if that makes sense. Stop playing the radio. Oh jeez. Hopefully that's the same direction. More chimney smoke. Oh man, please don't be. Are we shadowing them? Yeah, we'll pull off. Sehr wohl, Herr Kaloy. Actually, we'll Kurs go completely south. Zu Befehl. Oh, we're heading home. Kurs setzen. God bless. Sehr wohl, Herr still that. Same uh, hunter killer group. <sighs> All right. Well, we're at forty-four percent. We'll time compress this bad boy. All right. We're, we should be good in the clear now. Course of these coordinates setzen. We'll do like a Z pattern to burn up that patrol area time as it fills travel blah 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 inside because we're still just because we're out of torpedoes doesn't mean we can't patrol the area so report back to HQ for other submarines more or less is the point of that in my in my brain all right so we're at a hundred percent uh you know navigation correctness so I actually go ahead pull him or pull the navigator off the maps because his hobby is uh I guess, um, cooking, per se. But I'm not exactly sure how to, like, get him to cook. Maybe <laughs> galley. Because he, you know, he'll eventually, it's, I mean, every once in a while, uh, he'll just come over here and do it himself. Something for everybody else. 
that kind of way. And the officer playing cards in the dark because the lights are on. It's just bugged. Contrail, great. It's actually extremely bad. It's coming right ass. We're gonna go ahead and dive. Not messing around. Alarm! Alarm tauchen! Oh, so he got off the radio, man. Okay, he still sent it out. Which I like to go full speed, 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 violent speed and violence of action. U boats, yeah, <laughs> survival. Got me too. Go ahead and get a guy in the dive planes. Yeah, I would. like to think that Bruce said, uh, dive. Tower. I like to think these guys are getting faster, but honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> I've yet to time it, I suppose. You know, go ahead and go to 100. Just kidding. The contrail was feeling froggy. I'm going to change course this minute. These depth charges being dropped. <laughs> so it's a contrail, means it's a high altitude, potentially um, friendly or foe. And I don't, I don't really wait around to, you know, see if it's friendly or not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Play it safe and dive. Expecting that, but <clears throat> so they totally spotted us from high altitude and <sighs> potentially did a high drop on us. So you know that's why I changed things up. Went to 100 meters, maintain basically flank speed at this uh, depth. He's, he's pulling 13 knots because we have an engineer on the engine or the battery compartments. And because he's an airplane, you know, who knows how much fuel he has and all that trash. So we're going to go ahead and go sign running. But, uh, it was blue lighted, but we'll keep the lights on and everything like that. It's not going to be too hardcore. But yeah, so that's why I dive. As you can see right there, perfect example of, uh, Peter, better you being safe than sorry. He's still cooking. So then, uh, you know, obviously with the <clears throat> Mr. Hugin here cooking, because it's a side hobby, it's not a trade that you can pick or whatever, and it's a uh, plus seven morale. That's the only reason it's the green arrow going up right now. Because uh, obviously we just got, you know, an aerial depth charge attack. So who would be stressed out? I had 16 knots. We keep the gyro compass on. So our uh, yeah, navigation correctness stays about the same. Now again, this is just the general area said aircraft. It doesn't mean he's exactly right here. He's in this big blue circle somewhere, potentially circling my bed. So now I'm a little worried because, well, I mean, I guess it was about a day ago that we, um, let's see here, let's check the journal. Well, the journal doesn't record contacts. Nope. Today is June 11th. <sighs> yeah, it doesn't. Well, hold on a second. New link. June 8th. Er, hold on. June 8th. 
Okay, here we go. Yeah, so let's see here. <clears throat> U8, U1308, supposedly triggered a mine. I, I well in the bed, the destroyers really jacked them up. And then warships spotted uh, 9 June, so it was two days. We sank said U1308. Contrail spotted today. So it sounds, it seems like, so uh, in case you can't see it, the tip of my mouse is, uh, really slow down. The tip of the mouse is, uh, you know, the bar I intend to fill. So, let's see, we're at 100 meters. We're at silent running. We're going, you know, slow speed ahead. We got a dive plane officer, guy washing the battery, sleeping, 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 cooking, sleeping. All right, we'll go ahead and compress. Where is the little timer on this thing? <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, again, we don't know where the aircraft is. Soldier 9 earlier, because we're not in travel mode. Um, So that's not its exact location. It could be in this blue circle. This is just estimation. Hence the big question mark with binos. If that makes sense. So now we're in travel mode. Because the game is tell now telling us that the airplane may be potentially out of the area. It may not. It still might be circling overhead. Um, that's just an estimation that that thing flew away. So it's about 1,415. Probably wait till it's about, you know, 2,100 to, you know, great dark out, or potentially darker than go to periscope depth. Increase the speed here. Yeah, he's been cooking that whole time. Yeah, Kylo. Go ahead and get some sleep, dude. Jesus. So he's been navigating this whole time. So our is actually 100% hot dog. Go ahead and switch over to normal lighting. To curiosity, we'll do a deep ping. A thousand plus meters underneath the keel. Well, that's good. Good initiative on the hydrophones already. Uh, go ahead and search for targets. El Capitan. That's pretty dark. I guess for the sake of my eyeballs, you know, red light. Like, uh, I don't think there's any kind of bonus to that. At least there's no... It just says turn red light, blue light, uh, normal lights. But blue light is technically silent running. You save more oxygen. Red light doesn't seem like it has any uh, effects other than keeping your night vision a little bit better, per se. Aside from that, it doesn't, have any, doesn't seem to affect the crew at all, negative or positively. Alright, so nobody sees anything. We're going to go ahead and service, get these guys some fresh air. I'll keep that same course. Probably do a Z. Course auf diese Koordinaten setzen. I don't know, I just love watching this thing surface. We just look at that. You got the moon in the background, the moon reflecting off the water there. Crew popping out. Couldn't ask for a beautiful, a more beautiful looking submarine World War II simulation game. In my humble opinion. Keep the watch at one. 
is the officer there, this is the captain. Oops, wrong button. Uh, what was I doing? Captain, Herr Kalo. I rest. Come on, uh, you sleeping? Herr Kalo. Captain, this guy, I'm about to turn on the compressor. We're currently at 78% fuel left. Now we're just gonna compress time. Try to meet that patrol sector objective. Kind of just hanging around. I guess we'll stop the. Doesn't seem like the U boat likes the uh, turn around piece. <laughs> You can see the direction of the green. Maybe we'll go that way for a smidgen. Alright. Completed. Patrol completed. Go ahead, set course for home. Homeward bound. Send the message. Because you're the guy on the radio. Other radio man slash hydrophone operator sleeping. Maybe that guy's almost sending him to the rack. Did we send the message? I guess they don't care. Hmm. All right, so now we're on our way home. Put out the guy in the rack. Then there was man in the car on our way to Everybody's pretty happy. So we'll have the captain here go ahead and hit the rack. Captain. Have our second I, I go ahead and rotate. Watch. <clears throat> so I'll keep recording in case something does happen on the return, I guess. Oh, hold on a second, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, I did. We'll go ahead and, and Star Trek travel. Film. Seven in the morning, eight in the morning. It's about ten in the morning. Go ahead and increase the watch. I, I Show those aircraft. And continue on. No oh, chimney smoke. Chimney smoke spotted. Man, that that is not good. All right, well, they're going that way, so that's that's good. So because it's in travel mode, it's still time, still passing uh, relatively f quicker than usual. Unless I close distance, it would slow down, uh, you know, the gaming world time a smidgen to where it's almost like real time, if that makes sense. We're still traveling. It's not too fast, but still relatively faster than normal, if that makes sense. I think it's maybe like... Uh, See ten ten minutes maybe every maybe like ten seconds maybe I don't know but yeah we pour in the chimney smoke or smokestack smoke on the horizon so what I like is uh, without even you know looking outside the submarine he's already done his rain gear and you can hear lightning. <laughs> That's kind of a good thing for us because we're on the return. Uh, the, the waves aren't too bad, but uh, you know, it's, it's more rain. It's a little visibility. It's kind of a good good thing for us because we're, you know, RTB. It's returning to base. You don't know what RTB means. Um, but the water conditions do affect our speed. 16 knots, where we might get like 19 or 20 at the speed. we got plenty of fuel. Well, 66%. Engineers do a good job. Yeah, kind of Since we're uh, so, um, yeah, we'll go ahead. I'd like to listen to some music. Rotate. Actually, go ahead. Rotate out there, guy. Yeah, kind of and just for the cruise sake, we're gonna go ahead and white light it.
need some tunes. Copy it. push back to the patrol so you, you see what that's like pulling into this port I guess and you get to see the outcome of uh, I guess the so in other submarine sims depending on how well you did I guess you would be awarded uh, knights crosses or you know ribbons badges etc but uh, this time around you kind of gain XP towards uh, medals and ribbons. That's that you know at the. Uh, so I think we're about halfway for a Knight's Cross with oak leaves, I believe. For the and for the captain, get it out of pause. Let me just check here so you go manage. Yeah, so he has iron or the iron cross second class, iron cross first class, German cross with gold, got the Knight's Cross, and now we're working on the Knight's Cross. With uh, gold, whatever. Oak leaves, I believe. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. It's pretty fast. Boom. So because I kept in travel mode, the coastal line, the shore line is loading, and then it'll load again. Uh, it'll load the port here next go around. Sleep. So go ahead. We're pretty safe for right now. Go ahead and rotate the watch, anyways. I mean, I like to unfurl the flag. And then, uh, I'll be taking on the video. Condition bad judgment. Rotate these guys. Oh. Copy Hello. So, to speaking, you kind of want to be out here and then shoot down. So you're not trying to maneuver the boat and get it. So you don't have to be exactly. Uh, you don't have to like park the submarine yourself. Uh, as long as you get near the dock, you'll you'll eventually just dock. It'll automatically dock. Thank God. But it's a very time consuming process in the other port to the north west of. I think it's Sweden. Did it catch up again? It's a good time to save. <coughs> We can actually see the port. Detection unknown. Just ignore that because it's, you know, summary, other submarines. We'll uh, of of call it right now. here yes. and then kind of just wink. See how close that is. That's, that seems about right. I'll pause it. When I like to slow down. For any fine tuning adjustments, per se. Zero 03 pulling in the port at zero 03 in the morning. Yeah, it's 
so I think that's why I told this guy to go base guys and stand here because I think there's only you know four racks for the other officers. Obviously, that captain has his own, so he's idle. Herr Kaloy, guess we'll put you on the radio. And Sehr wohl, Herr Kaloy. Herr Kaloy. Submarines, obviously, traditionally. You know, hot swap racks. Not enough space for everybody to have their own bed. Just so I'd compress it, but at the same time, just kind of showing you that you have to be perfectly aligned as long as the bow is relatively close to uh, you know the docking area and if you're not sure where to dock usually once you get close enough in the port you'll look for this the guy in his little uh, entourage vehicle if you will maybe dude's pacing around in another sub pen or base yeah please zip in there I'm kind of betting on it not scraping but it might okay Phew. That would be embarrassing. All right, so now we've returned from patrol. Make sure everything's off. Click on Mr. Capitan here. We go visit our leading officer, Klaus Schmid. Beim BDU wird viel über ihre letzte Patrouillenfahrt gesprochen. Now they'll roll into the awards. Oh, so this guy is getting close to an iron cross because Hans Jürgen. Jürgen gains points for the next decoration because he saved the life of Eric Schwarzer. That was the guy that had the heart attack. This is Von Graf, my captain. You know, a couple hundred points away from receiving the Knight's Cross of Oak Leaves. And a summary. So 11 days at sea. Wow, he sank 38,000 tons. That's pretty, pretty legit. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Don't really count that poor crew of the U. Charging U battery. Uh, completed all our objectives. Usually <laughs> you see uh, check marks over here, but for whatever reason it's cutting off. I'm not going to complain. Keep it still working. So then uh, now we're going to, you know. Go ahead, give my crew needs a break. Give him a vacation. I think the best one, honestly, would be uh, let's see, discipline penalties will be reset. Discipline for five days, or plus discipline, plus five discipline for ten days. Having time to thank your crew for 25 days. Yeah, we'll do this one. Uh, discipline penalties will be set. Having time to thank your crew gains 25%. Extra experience from last patrol. Due to contact the politicians in the area. Uh, headquarter tests will be performed at 100%, so we're going to do that one. I'm chill at the uh, German Alps Resort. Week. Cruise on vacation. Uh, you saw the XP pop up there. I didn't see it. Couldn't tell you how much. These 14 days. You just get to sit here and watch the submarine and the base weather changes or fog. Uh, you boat. Uh, let's see here. What's this? Why did it stop? We the entire eight days left. So I think it'd be kind of cool. Is I mean, they implemented like some kind of stupid mini game, you know, where you're, you're playing pool at a bar or something. I don't know. Just an idea. I'm not a programmer. I have no idea how long should that take. All right. So the crew is back from vacation. Uh, so now they have an additional XP. From the previous patrol, and it has pretty good uh, patrol. Um, so there's a lot of XP to be gained. So I think so he has one skill. <laughs> Officer sign could be uh, assigned to work in a galley. It proves, provides this bo bonus for the crew uh, working here. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and go ahead and do that. And uh, we let's see if he gained a skill. Nope. Uh, but yeah, he, yeah he, he totally acquired a skill. 
All right, so research officer analyzed captured allied equipment in the workshop to get acceleration through random technology research by 40% or unlock new mine research in headquarters. Huh. Interesting. But they do it noticeably slower than the officers. In addition, the officer can now recruit two sailors instead of one. Interesting. Oh, officer's assistance. So we can save. Charging battery. You're know, increasing the likelihood. Charge of, complete. I wonder if you guys hear that. You increase the likelihood of saving sailors, which is a good investment because this experience is pretty good. Uh, I haven't really came across a situation where we wouldn't do that, so we'll go with you know, investing in the crew, not so much technology per se. That guy's totally gain XP. I'm just going off of memory. Memory. All right. So, this is our torpedo mechanic? The officer. The officer uh, carefully carries out maintenance of torpedoes, completely eliminating the risk of debt interference and extending the time for which they remain or remain maintained by 25%. That's actually pretty cool. Explosive charges. Engineers uh, familiar with the use of explosives can use them to effectively sink enemy units, saving torpedoes. And ammunition. What? What? The engineer. Let me reread that again. The engineer is familiar with the use of explosives. It can use them to effectively sink enemy units, saving torpedoes and ammunition. What is he talking about? Explosive charges? Oh, so. Uh, I guess if we come along, or maybe if we get close enough, and I guess warned alone. Uh, ships and let them evacuate first. That might be a thing. That might be a mechanic, and then put charges on the boats and then blow them up instead of burning torpedoes. That might be a thing. I kind of want to try that out now. But we'll do the uh, officer carries carefully carries out maintenance of torpedoes, completely eliminating the risk of detonator failure and extending the time for which they remain they they remain basically uh, preheated for 25 percent. We'll go with that one. I'm not so sure about the explosives. <laughs> Maybe that's just, you know, because we did have the option when we get, went aboard the submarine to we did. place charges. Maybe that's, you know, the uh, yeah, green light like for that. Uh, and that's The funny thing is, is um, this guy, since he's gotten here, he's grown a beard. The only person that hasn't grown a beard is this Hugan guy. Captain Slurry growing one. This guy's got a full beard already. So when they're new, like you're basically, it's a green crew, baby face. He had the skill, connections. Oh, it's, oh, I guess it requires more than one. I don't know. Uh, alrighty then. So, Kapitän, das kann deine see if I can get some officers to wissen, put sie ihre in there möchten. for me. Uh, my transit. Yeah, so we're gonna let that guy recuperate. <laughs> guy that had the heart attack for crying out loud. Gonna give that guy a break. Cause he panicked. So that's 16. 17. Or 16. Uh, 17. 18. Hoffman. Show me their files. No officers, you know, available. So I like to pick my next mission. Beim BDU wird viel über ihre letzte and that determines my logistics. Alright, our uh, favors headquarters. I'd like to ask a few favors. Let's see if any more reputation stuff on the key one done. Nope, same reputation stuff. All right, so repetitions maxed out. Uh, what's to do with higher credit cores? Oh, he still has eight days. What's this? Hydrophones. So we'll accept this. Twelve days. We'll send a. Uh, well, shit. Oh boy. So that's kind of annoying here, is um, because he's on the crew roster to depart. I have to exit all the way out. I 
go back Kapitän, to this guy. Das kann deine neue Crew sein. Lassen Sie mich wissen, wenn Sie Ihre Dokumente sehen möchten. Yep. Uh, true. So we'll have the more senior. We'll have Osterman, Jürgen, Hans, Jürgen, Osterman. Take a break. And we'll add the engineer to replace him, and he's gonna go research uh, hydrophones. So we can upgrade that later. Level up. I don't know who did that. Why did that happen? Where are you now? Maybe that's just light skills. You got more skills? Nope. Maybe I got light. Uh, oh, lost my train of thought. All right, so now. Whoosh, So now he's not on the crew roster, we can talk to him, being an officer, go to headquarters and assign that task. Uh, headquarters. Empty. And then, you know, so 12 days. If it's, if, it's, if there's an exclamation point, um, you know, so he, it has to be a radio man. He got two leaders here. Radio man. Selected. He fits the radio man description. Uh... Yeah, you know, now he's researching hydrophones, uh, tier one, I suppose. So to get two officers in the headquarters, uh, yeah, to unlock that and reputation, reputation points, but re reputation points, God bless. Oh, I kind of want. Oh, damn it! I want to look at the. So, anyways, like for instance, this was like almost 24 days. He's been at this for quite a while because we're trying to. I try to uh, you know research it before you know November 1941 it says warning this uh, work will is in the early stage of development attempts to complete it before this time period will take twice as much more time so we'll take about 24 24 days I have about four liters and I can kind of uh, you know manage that but Oh jeez, what the hell? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, that's too many dudes. So I'll probably drop him. Yeah. I will take the three engineers because there's only four bunks in this type of submarine. That guy, will, I'll have to sit there and micro the crap out of the uh, out of the crew, which is not. That's not the right spot. God bless. Alright, so I'll take care of that. Go ahead and cut this. And then, uh. Oh, I jazz. And cut.